Welcome back. You're watching Overdrive. The Citro C5 Air Cross has our vote as one of the most comfortable SUVs in the segment with a feeling of expensiveness to match its price tag. With the C5 Air Cross facelift, some criticisms against the previous generation model have been addressed, but largely the biggest criticism hasn't. Its price tag. Does the 2022 version of the C5 Air Cross make sense then? Let's find out. This is the facelifted Citroen C5 Aircross and for just under rupees 3 lakh more for the top of the line shine variant which is the only variant it's now available in Citroen's throwing in fresh new headlights, a new grille design, a new bumper, new alloy wheels and new taillights and some other bits inside but the question is for a car that was already considered overpriced is this update just a little too much for a little too little? That's what we're going to find out the exterior changes we spoke about herald Citroen's new design language and while parts of it like the new bumpers, functional air curtains and those smashing 18 inch wheels are very nicely executed, we can't help but feel the pre-facelift model had more of a unique presence both up front and at the rear. When we first saw pictures of the updated Citroen C5 Aircross, we were really excited because we felt that the interiors lacked a bit of modernity and we were hoping that the facelift would fix that and really bring alive the potential of the car. Now, some of that is true because the 8-inch touchscreen is now a 10-inch touchscreen, but unfortunately, the UI is still a little basic and that's being kind to it. Now, you do get Apple CarPlay, but it's wired only. You do get wireless phone charging. There's a lot of great storage. Now, the big change is that the gear shifter is now a gear selector toggle and the drive mode dial is now a drive mode switch. There's still great storage. There's a huge central cubby hole right here. Now, importantly, the seats, which are already one of the most comfortable seats out there, have become even better with 15mm more padding. What that means is that there's even more plushness and even more softness in the seats. But if you do like your car interiors a little more subtle, the C5 may be right up your alley. There's not enough soft touch surfaces or features really to justify the price, but there's no denying it all feels very well put together and very, very usable and spacious. The C5 still remains the only SUV to have three individually folding and sliding rear seats, even if they aren't as sink into plush as the front. It's also got a massive 580 to 720 litre boot. While there haven't been any mechanical changes to the C5, which means it's still powered by that 2-litre diesel engine with 177 PS and 400 newton meters of torque, going to the front wheels via an 8-speed automatic. When you're navigating narrow by lanes, for example, you'll realize that there's a lot more that Citroen should have put in the update. The first of which should have been 360-degree cameras because most of the segment offers it. And for a car this large, you do require a little help now and then. Even if this does have front and rear proximity sensors, the cameras just help. Now, when you do put your foot down, you'll realize that there is quite a bit of poke to get this SUV moving. Now, while you don't have those 360-degree cameras to help you out, what does help the Citroen C5's case in the city is the fact that the steering is very, very light. Now, it does weigh up as speeds rise, which is a good thing, and it remains pretty natural feeling. This is actually a very nice steering for this kind of car. Lastly, the drive experience remains stress-free and responsive at the same time. What you will notice is that in the lower gears, there is a tendency for the engine to be a little loud, you can hear it revving out to about 2000-2500 rpm and you want to get away from the traffic lights a little quickly. But once you're in those higher gears, the engine does settle down quite a bit. Now, the ride quality is another aspect of the C5 Acros that we absolutely love. This has to be one of the most comfortable riding SUVs in this price range, if not the price range above, if not the most comfortable SUV. And the extra comfort that you can find in these seats now seems like it's adding to that. Ride comfort is definitely the C5 strong point and it only gets better. 
Okay, so does the C5 make sense? It's the most expensive SUV in its class. And considering its size and the number of people that it can seat, it seems like a tough sell. In our opinion, it still is the most comfortable SUV out there. So if comfort is your absolute priority over features and gizmos and tech and everything else, this could be the car for you. That said, there are SUVs out there that are better spec. Now, if we put the updated C5 up against the brand new Hyundai Tucson, the VW Tiguan, the Skoda Kodiak, and even the Jeep Compass, which the C5 won against last time, I don't think we're going to be getting a winner from France. And that's just because other SUVs in the segment have moved on quite a bit. And even if they seem expensive, I think the C5 makes them seem like their value for money. And that's just an unfortunate truth. Well, Citroen happens to be following a minimalist approach in terms of creature comfort and features while offering customers driver's cars. And this minimalist approach will be largely applied to the EVs of the future as well as we've seen earlier this week at the global premiere, the Oli concept. The concept showcases the brand's intent to shed additional weight and cost by offering straightforward electric mobility. Do head to our YouTube channel for more details. On that note, it's uh, time for us to wrap up this week's edition of Overdrive, but we'll be back next week with more high-octane stories. Until next time then, ride and drive safe.